Hi folks, TJ here. Sunday, package arrived, was it Friday? Saturday? I forget, I think it arrived Friday. And too busy on Saturday to try it. But today, we're gonna go ahead and do a first test. Now I didn't do an unboxing for this because the box came from overseas. It had a nice little gouge in it, so I was a little nervous on uh, what happened inside. So I wanted to open it up quick and make sure there's no damages. There were none, so that was good. Now, what are we yapping about? I mean, I, I could be talking about something for the Atari 800, but no. We're going to talk about the Orc Atmos. Now, right here in front of me, I've got two of the, in my opinion, coolest looking 8-bit computers out there. There's lots of them. Lots of cool computers. Atari 800, in my opinion, is still the overall coolest looking big tank of a computer from that day and age. But this Orc Atmos is sexy. Very sexy. I mean, you've got this black appeal and an orangey reddish key and orangey reddish accents. It looks really cool. So what did I buy? I purchased this doohickey and I'll take probably the camera off. The Cumana Reborn. I've been wanting to get one of these for a while. Uh, it's just, you know, so many different things that I want to get and uh, only so much money to go around. Finally saw a note in the Oric Atmos Facebook group that uh, more were being made. Anybody interested? Made some? Snagged one. I already own the Erebus, which is great. I already own a Cumulus, which came with my Oric. Uh, but I hadn't owned a Reborn yet. And what's cool about the Reborn is you can actually not only read discs, you can write discs, which is a really good thing if I ever want to get into keying in some data and want to save it. So, let's go ahead and take the camera off. We're going to do a first test. Now, I have to use one of those cheapy SCART to HDMI devices to get video on my HDMI display. So the display is never really good, but it gives me enough to say, hey, it works. I do want to invest in a nice, nicer RGB to SCART to HDMI type of adapter. <coughs> Off the top of my head, RetroTINK. They make a really neat one called the 5X now, but it's like 300 bucks or more. I don't know if I can quite afford that or justify it yet. I may get one of their $100 SCART devices that is just going to be strictly used for the Auric at this point, so a hundred bucks. And it supposedly works pretty good, but it doesn't offer all the other bells and whistles and allow me to connect to other things, because the 5X has tons of options. Now, maybe I should get that one, you know, because then I've got Ataris and, and Sinclairs and all these other things I could try to test. But today's Auric day. It's Sunday. Uh, we're going to play with the Auric. So, let me take the camera off and I'll kind of show you a quick close-up of the setup. And we're going to turn it on and see if it works. Hopefully it does. So, again, two of the sexiest 8-bit computers right there. Now, in, ter in terms of sexy, though, the Oric definitely wins in terms of sexy. But in terms of ruggedness, combat, tank, which one do I want to take into a war? Yeah, that one right there. No, I don't want to talk about war, though. There's some shit going on right now that's crap. Uh, hopefully it gets resolved soon. But we're talking about 8-bit computers. The love of 8-bit computers. Now look at this. Look at this. I'm telling you. Look at how sexy that is. You've got the Auric Atmos. And now next to it, I've got this Cumulus Reborn. This little switch here allows me to switch between disks. This is a USB stick type of device. It came with this. It's got some probably demos and stuff on there, I'm guessing. Out the back, which is nice compared to all the other devices I have, a nice long cable. All the other devices I have have a really short cable. And it's kind of a pain. The Arebus has to kind of flop over to kind of... This one I can put on the side and it look good. So I like that. Out of the back, I've got the RGB to SCART cabling, which goes over to my cable of hell. <laughs> there, uh, I've got lots of computers I connect up. So, and, and don't mind the dust. Yeah, you'll probably see some dust there. Uh, and then over here, you've got a piggyback on the back of this thing. Let's see if I can 
that's uh, probably good enough. So there's like an on-off button over here, I'm guessing. A reset button here. You plug in your power here, and it's one of those Y cables, so it goes off to the SCART adapter, uh, all this stuff. So you got to really have a jostle of cables to get everything to work right. And I am running it off of a stock um, AC adapter, 220 volts. Uh, to 110, the 220 volt type of transformer. So yeah, it, quite the setup right here. I, I do. I would like to clean that up at some point, but when you're jostling gear around and switching out computers, I can't really find the exact home yet I like to have for my Oryx. So until then, we're just gonna use what I have. So let me go ahead and get this camera. That should be good enough, we're already five minutes in. And there is a little display on the front here. I'm not going to show a close-up of that when it's in use. Uh, maybe I will. I don't know. Uh, so do I have this thing? Okay. 110 volt transformer. And it's already powered up. The power button must have been in an odd position already. Okay. I'll take it. Uh, everything's actually all connected. And sound's coming out. Crap. Okay, so this is a Space 1999 demo starring Barbara Bain, Space 1999. I've seen this before. I think I've actually, did I do it on the Erebus or Cumulus? One of the two. I think it was the Cumulus. So cool, it's, it's actually working. Let me grab the camera and we'll just do a close up. I don't know if it will pick up this LCD. You could kind of see. So there is the little switch mechanism. Now let's go ahead and try. Yeah, okay, it's playing a demo. Cool. So let's go ahead. I don't know if I can just go ahead and turn this and find something else and then hit the reset button. That's my guess. So let's try. Um, Ortec uh, Barbiturate Disc. That's what it says. You could probably read it, maybe. Oh, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's go ahead and pan back out. Put it on my tripod, in other words. And I'm going to hit the reset key and see what happens. So, on the back, there is a reset. Let's go ahead and hit it. It made a little noise. Ding. And you can see the, probably the flickering on the screen. Oh, boy! 1985 to 2005, 20, 30th anniversary, maybe that went fast. <laughs> do, 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 do. So this is working right out the chute. It was already in the on position. Interesting. Uh, I don't know if my finger hit it that way or it was left in the on position. I'll leave it there for now. Defense force. Now you can hear this. So it's got it maybe a little speaker in there to make it sound like disc access. It kind of goes... Old school coding party. So this is a de another demo. So they put a few demos on here just to say, hey, it's working. Now I know there's, uh, I asked in the group, there is a Windows program and I don't run Windows. I could probably figure it out and get uh, Windows put on my Linux box through some type of thing or something. But there's a program that you can use to um, make HFE files. That's what needs to be on the USB stick, I guess. So I'll explore that later for now. Hopefully there's some that are re re freely downloadable and I'll just grab some. Disco rock and roll, baby. So cool. It is working. So this device, you can kind of see, I won't take the camera off. You've got the nice orangey reddish accent. I don't know technically what color this is called. I'm a little colorblind, but it looks like an orange reddish to me. This has a matching color. It's got the nice switch on the side to switch whatever disc you want. Hit reset and it, and it loads up that particular floppy, I guess. This is acting as like a floppy disc. That's what I understand. Now, I'll have to figure out, is there a uh, user's guide on proper use of this? I've asked. I don't know if there is one or not. But I need to explore uh, writing and saving and if there's anything special you have to do to utilize that device to do that. My guess is maybe you have to switch the switch to like a blank floppy that you have to create and then write to it. I'm guessing. Did you hear the tick tick tick? Maybe. 
So this is a demo disc. So that's it. This is going to be a relatively short video for me. Ten minutes. It booted. It's working. And now I've got a Cumana Reborn. Wow. I own three cool devices for my Oric now. At one point, I'll invest in getting an Oric 1, an original one, just to kind of be complete. Explore my Oric more. Uh, and there's also another device. 8-bit Unity or 8-bit um, something. 8-bit... Hub, I think it's called, and it looks the part. It looks like an RNG reddish auric device, but it's uh, got capability to connect to multiple, even like an Atari Lynx, for example, you can connect it to, and it acts as like a hub to connect joystick and connect other media to it. Looks interesting. I just have to save my money and get one one day. But until then, hey, now I've got this Kumana reborn, and I can explore my auric even more. Thanks for watching the video. Have a great rest of your Sunday. Almost over. It's time to go back to work tomorrow. Oh, work. Overrated, right? <laughs>